At the annual Worldwide Developers Conference in June, Apple took the covers of iOS 13, the latest update for its mobile operating system, and it's a big one. The update introduces a ton of exciting new features for iPhones, going all the way back to the 6S, including a couple of highly requested ones like the dark mode. Since then, Apple has pushed a few beta releases of the software for developers as well as the general audience, and I recently had the chance to try it out on my iPhone XR. To be honest, I'm actually quite impressed with the improvements and in this video, I'll be talking about some of the best new features in iOS 13 that you shouldn't miss. Hey guys, this is Abhijit from GT and let's get right to it, shall we? So the first and one of the most requested new features in iOS 13 is the dark mode. And Apple has made sure that you get to know about it as soon as you update your phone. But in case you still miss it, you'll find it right at the top of the display and brightness settings on your phone. To turn it on, just select the dark option under the new appearance setting and you're good to go. In case you don't want to keep using the dark mode all the time, you can also turn on the automatic toggle which will let you set up a custom schedule to change the appearance automatically. Apple has also added a handy little shortcut for the dark mode in the control center which you can use if you want to change the appearance on the fly. To access that, you'll need to tap and hold on the brightness slider and then tap on the new appearance icon in the bottom left corner. It's that simple. Next up, there's the new sign-in with Apple feature that further bolsters user privacy on the platform. The feature essentially lets you sign into apps and websites using your Apple ID without relying on your Facebook and Twitter accounts for the same. You don't even have to enter any of your credentials. Just tap on sign in with Apple, use Face ID or Touch ID to authenticate the sign in and you're good to go. The best part about using this method to sign into apps is that Apple promises to never track or profile your activity. iOS 13 also packs in some minor improvements to the camera app. You get access to the new portrait mode light controls along with a new high key mono lighting effect. You can increase or decrease the portrait light intensity for each portrait effect. By increasing the intensity, you will get smoother skin, sharper eyes and brighter facial features. And if you decrease it, you will be able to give your images a more subtle, refined look. The new high key mono effect is also quite good and with it you can click stunning monochromatic portraits with a white background. Pretty cool, right? Once you've clicked your photos and checked the photos app, you'll notice that it has too changed quite a bit. The app has an all new layout with a photos tab that curates all your best photos in a customized feed. Now the photos tab also showcases live photos and videos that play automatically as you scroll through your feed. I really like this new layout and ever since I've switched to iOS 13, I find it easier to rediscover old photos. Compared to the old layout, this feels a whole lot more intuitive. The Photos app also packs in a couple of improvements on the editing front. With iOS 13, you get access to new image and video editing tools, which means that you won't have to rely on third-party apps anymore. There's a welcome change in the editing UI with all the tools now placed front and center in a new slider that lets you scroll through each adjustment option. You can also tap each edit you apply to see how the photo looks before and after so you know what each adjustment is doing. Number of tools has also increased significantly with the app now giving you access to exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows, contrast and brightness settings among many more. And it's not just the photo editing suite that has received an overall. With the iOS 13 you also get many of these same tools for video editing as well which means that you will now be able to adjust parameters like exposure, contrast, saturation, brightness and more on your videos. And just like for photos, you also get the built-in filters to jazz things up a bit. All the video editing tools also get an intensity slider for adjustments along with a couple of settings to straighten videos, change their orientation or the alignment. However, these videos are only good for simple edits. If you want to make complex edits, you'll still need to rely on a third-party app. Much like the Photos app, the Reminders app has also received a much needed facelift in iOS 13. The app now includes more powerful and intelligent features that help you create, organize and keep track of all your reminders. There's a new quick toolbar just above the keyboard that allows you to easily add times, dates, location, flags or attachments to a reminder. You get enhanced Siri support with which you'll be able to type out more descriptive sentences and the Reminders app will automatically understand and provide relevant suggestions. Siri will also recognize possible reminders and conversations on the Messages app and give you suggestions to create them right then and there. 
In its current shape and form, the Reminders app is all you need to keep track of your daily tasks. And I can assure you that once you switch to it, you won't feel the need to use any third-party apps like Todoist. Speaking of third-party apps, SwiftKey used to be one of the first apps I installed on my phone because I just couldn't bear to type on the stock keyboard with no swipe gesture support. But now the quick type keyboard supports swipe input so you can just glide your finger from letter to letter to enter a word. Compared to the usual tap inputs, using the quick path functionality is far more efficient and I can type out messages faster than ever before. Next up, the Files app on iOS 13 also brings with it a number of major changes that will help you manage your iPhone storage with ease. There's a new column view that displays rich metadata so that you can see details for each file as you browse through the storage. There's a new downloads folder where you can access all your web downloads and attachments, which is definitely a welcome addition. The app now also supports external drives so that you can easily access files on the thumb drive and it even lets you select and zip them for easier sharing via email. For iPad users, there are a host of new keyboard shortcuts to make navigating the Files app a whole lot easier, along with search suggestions that work to the same effect. Rounding things off is a simple but very important change to the control center that gets rid of probably the single most annoying thing about iOS. Check this out. Yep, that's right, you can now select Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices right from the control center without opening up the settings app first. Isn't that cool? Well, to be honest, it isn't because Android has had this feature since what feels like forever and it was high time Apple included it on iOS as well. I used to be so frustrated switching my AirPods between my Mac and my iOS. I had to keep going to the Bluetooth settings to do it, but finally I'm able to do it quickly from the control center. Now, this isn't all that's new in iOS 13 by any means. Now, we have shared the most important stuff, but there are a lot of other changes as well. And by the time the final build of the software rolls out to the public, I am sure Apple will add some more. Again, these are by far the most significant changes that you should know about. Uh, we look forward to your comments and uh, let us know which of these changes you like the most and which of these you don't like at all. Do hit the like button if you like this video on iOS and wish to see more such videos. This is Abhijit signing off for this time and I'll see you guys in the next one. Where do you